morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hey, Jesus Christ, bless you. Um, I think I've come to the end of um, a particular cycle of mediocrity. You know that really average mediocrity where you're just like, if you'd known about it a month and a half ago, you would have went on strike and just gone all the the point. One of those periods. Um, and amongst many other things, it was my post, my freight, that got sabotaged. And sabotaged, I hope. Doing a really important project, and I've had stuff stolen. Um, the big one just recently, yesterday I find out, two packages that I've needed since the beginning of December, after pushing and pushing and pushing to get an answer, the freight company finally communicates. They returned everything back to sender and I got refunds. But how could they not communicate this? You know? And it's the queerness behind the entire situation where you're just like, I can't believe how useless this society has become if that is the standard of what would be deemed normal useless absolutely useless like a meteorite smacking straight into the side of this planet setting off all the volcanoes wouldn't be enough to readjust the correction of just how useless this place has become if the last month and a half of the sabotage that i've been through is what is normal dead set so useless and especially when you got common sense and you got to suffer it it's just uh, like if, if there's any form of sense in it so obviously the only point of it is to try and like you know, get you aggravated but like it's hard to get angry when things are just useless you're just like rust has more value than how useless the experience has been you know? anyway so in regards to it i think the lord has dropped judgment in that situation though and um i'd hate to be the company that did what they did to us because it may be enough to shut their doors um but not only that, in regards to my services that I receive and all the rest of it, I am pretty damn sure that the individuals that were involved in that have also they've been moved on. And there is one lovely individual that I have, you know, just is, is a really good human. And um, turns out that, you know, they may actually be there now until they retire. It's great. So that would be lovely. And... All the concerns that I expressed, they were like, well, actually, everything that you're saying is true and you have these rights and all the rest of it. And it just, um, in this world, hey, no one has a right to be spiteful, vindictive, nasty, hateful. They don't have these rights, so. And to act like it's normal, they absolutely don't have these rights. So, people wonder why they don't get blessed. Are you being decent? Anyway, leave that at that. I want to have a conversation with you about monitoring spirits. Who they are, what they look like, the type of people they sit in, what is their objective, how to break free of it once and for all, just the topic, the situation. First of all, there's a bit of a vibration that's going on. I do apologise for that, so there's a bit of background noise. You're going to have to suffer it the same way I suffer it. Um, I've got to get it fixed. Anyway. So... I kept getting, I'm just gonna, I'm trying to find a doorway in and Holy Spirit have your way, speak through me, use my experience, let's go on a ride and give these decent humans that are going to watch this, that aren't this, what it is they need to know to be able to educate themselves to be able to break free of it also, right? So, just recently, here's the door in, I received I kept receiving an ad, and the ad is, because I don't do this, but it was the ad, and it was like a sign from God to show me what was going on. And the ad, and the ad was, would you like to know where your loved ones are, but don't know where they are? And the app for this ad is, if you put your phone number into this app, you can monitor your loved ones. You can know where they're at at all times. And I was like, here up. So... 
I've been told to get a new phone number. And I've got the new phone number, I'm speaking on the new phone now, and um, the old phone, I thought I lost it the other day, but I found it this morning in the rain um, when the alarms were going off. I was standing there and I was like, why can't I hear an alarm? Anyway, it turns out it was um, out in the grass, out the back yard. It fell out of my pocket. But anyway, um, I think where I'm at though is that those days are done and um, that number's got to go and it's got to happen for like many reasons. It's kind of, the f last phone number that I had was like the transition phone number from the number that everyone had when they all had contact, right? But beyond that number where they all had contact, there's a little bit in all of this. So this is something for you to contemplate as well in regards to who do you get your phone number out to? Because where I'm at right about now is every day I'm looking for every reason to just go, I don't need a phone anymore. And you'll get to that point when you recognize that the last thing you want to do is be annoyed. Because that's what's happening is you're getting annoyed, right? But beyond being annoyed, there's a little something going on and like, I've been trying to look at the, you know, like the P trail, the telltale signs, the um, vital signs. You know, we talk about the eight vital signs of what a Decepticon looks like. The eight vital signs of what a monitoring human being looks like. So what is a monitoring human being? You know those people that are in your life and you don't realize it, but they want to act like big brother or big sister? Or you know those people that are in your life and they want to keep an eye on you? Oh, look, I'm just looking after you, making sure you're safe. Um, and you know those people that they, they feel like they've got some, something to pass on to you? Um, or those people that feel like you've always got to go and give them a hand? Or those people that want to speak to you about all their problems, so you're, you're there as an eater listen. And with each one of them, there's a ramification. So, you know, if there's an eater listen, they'll talk to you for two hours straight, dribbling their shit without a want, need, or desire to stop talking because their only job is to wear you out. Um, in regards to wanting to tell you something, typically they're clumsy and useless, but they're full of, they're, they're bookers, they're full, they're full of knowledge, but they don't apply what they've learned. So, um, they call themselves a coach, but as a coach, they've self-imposed themselves. See, I don't ask for a coach, because who's gonna coach me? So it's these people that have got like the, the coach mentality where they think, well, I'm gonna go out of my way to put myself in that person's life to tell them what to do. Useless. Um, another one. So, You've heard people say to you, oh, you need to. No, 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 I don't need to do anything. Literally, when anyone says you need to do something, not only are they 500% wrong, bang, they've broken all trust because this is where the big situation is. You've got love, trust, and respect. Give respect, give love, you've got to earn trust. You can respect an individual but not trust them is the bigger issue here. All of these individuals that are all about attention are also all about you should trust me, and it's like, well, I don't trust you, I couldn't trust you as far as I could kick you. Did you know you actually have to earn trust? Now, the problem is with this earning of trust is they are deceptive, you know, they're deceptive, I'll say, they're deceptive. And so what they'll do is they've got this big fat mask on, and it could be a past partner, it could be whoever it needs to be. What they'll do is they'll fake it until they make it, but what is fake it until you make it? They'll fake it until they can see there is a comfort zone to settle in, then they let the mask off and you see just how much of a useless piece of shit they are. So unfortunately, I'm yet to find a decent human yet that's not a useless piece of shit. And it's not because I'm saying that humans are useless, but it's because that's the unfortunate issue I've got to deal with is I've got agents, monitoring agents that have been passed into my life and their only job is to be fucking useless, right? And with that, Half of what they'll do is you don't realize it is, is at important times in your life, they show up for no particular reason and you don't realize it, but they love to minimalize you. They love to throw stumbling blocks so you'll feel it. They love to try and will you down. They like to try and um, decrease you. They want to stand over the top of you. You know, they're just, they're bullies. And see, I was getting back to the common denomination here. I was watching every single person that I've met today drop like flies, drop like flies. And um, they can't help themselves. It's like picking your nose. It's just a bad habit. But beyond a bad habit, there is a perceptible reason in there for it because no one that I know of has Jesus Christ in them. No one. 
me, me alone, that's it. Yeah? And so I've got to suffer the mediocrity of the society that I live in amongst thousands with no Jesus. Jesus will walk in there and everywhere, just like, where are my, you know, there's lost sheep everywhere. You're talking about like, you've got the flock and he's leaving the flock for the one. No, there's only the one and there's just a flock that are lost. That's it. But here's the thing about the flock, they're ignorant. They don't want to know. This is half the damn problem. So my job is to piss such excellence that they're like, huh, how on earth can someone piss such excellence? Because the only way that in this Australian society where I live that anyone is going to even consider Jesus Christ in their life is to recognize that when God works within a person's life you outclass, outsmart, outstrength, out everything, everything. You are bigger, better, smarter, faster, harder, you have paid your dues, you are a leader, a real leader. But here's the thing, who are you going to lead? Your pets, that's about it. Because humans are useless at the moment. Absolutely useless. Until we have another pandemic, until we have a famine, until we have some serious hardship where people start to really struggle, whether either starving or they're broke or going through something where poverty kicks in, you're not going to be able to help them because they're stubborn as rock. Anyway, back to it. We don't need to go down that line. I want to get back to what's most important here the monitoring spirit the monitoring spirit and the person who typically does it is spiteful they're jealous and they hate the fact that you might be getting your shit together and you're getting your life in order and you're going and onwards and upwards and you're actually making something of yourself they hate that um, they're feeders so they're only happy when you're drained and a part of their job is when they do speak to you they want to bring you down a little um, they want to discredit you, they want to knock your confidence around a little bit, um, ever so supperly. And so the one that I've, the latest one that I've been dealing with is the last and final one, if we're talking about who was at the top of the table here, this one here, um, so deceptive it was hard to pick up on it, but if anything, maybe it felt like I needed them in my life, but like, we don't need anyone. And <clears throat> what I had to come to realise is, they get a sense of power out of thinking that others need them. You don't need them. They are not worth shit. They're not worth anything. They are valueless shit. And they can't even get their own job done, let alone what you're doing. We're all meant to stay in our own lane, but these monitoring individuals aren't any good at what they do. So because they struggle with what they're doing, they try to control what you're up to ultimately and or if they are any good, they're not getting any results and because you're getting all the results, they're like, hang on, let's level the playing field. Humans hate winners. You wanna know why there's no winners? You wanna know why there's no success? You wanna know why the planet isn't in heaven? Because humans are fucking jealous. Dude, sick. Um, in Australia, the dis like, what do we call it? The distortion of jealousy. That is Australia. If you look at this block of soil, this, this, half chewed out rabbit eating its carrot down the bottom, jealousy. Hate filled jealousy. Um, I, it's just, you know, like you sort of really get to the point where you're like, I don't think I've ever met an Aussie that's not jealous. It's just unbelievable. Um, and especially in regards to my life personally, I don't think I've met someone that wasn't assigned to my life to try and destroy it. It's unbelievable. Um, even the ones that you thought potentially weren't, no, no, they were. Every last one. And I just, yeah, sometimes I sit here and think to myself, like, I can't believe it took this long to get to the point to recognize that it was the case, but hey, at least I've got to this point to realize it. But in regards to it, what's really going on? God's children, they've got a lead around your neck. And they believe they can handle you. But they fumble the ball. They think that you're the ball to handle, but they all fumble it. Why? Because they're clumsy. No one wants to fight to put the effort in to become something more than what it is they are. And because they don't know how to pull their own finger out and use discipline to be able to achieve what it is that they would like, they'd rather just sit back and tear others down because the only sort of success that they can get is tearing a chunk out of your ass. So it is important, not that we prove anyone wrong, but it's important that we kick the goals to ensure that they know that no, it's because they are pieces of shit. 
humans have to learn that being a piece of shit isn't valuable. So the job is, is to just keep on keeping on keeping on and keeping on. But in regards to monitoring spirits, monitoring people, again and again and again. This last one that I had to really sit on and I was like, oh goodness me, like, I could feel the mystical deception that was in it. Have you ever felt like an arrow gets spiritually shot into you and you didn't realize that it got shot until it was too late? You're like, huh, I can't believe that individual did that. Frenemies, if, yeah, frenemies. This is ultimately what we're talking about, hey, frenemies. What is a friend? You don't have friends. And if you're super successful, you'll never have friends. Not unless you come another across another super successful person and you'll be, you know, co-acquaintances, essentially. Friends? Maybe you don't really have enough time to have friends, I guess, but I can't believe how, yes, even to this day, I haven't had a human experience where I can say I've celebrated my success and achievements with another human being. No, no, they're all fucking jealous. Jealous. That's it. They're so engulfed in their own jealousy that, like, you will never have the opportunity to enjoy the celebration of doing a good job. You want to learn to give yourself a high five and enjoy what God has given to you, you know? Because the last thing I really need to be concerning myself with is living a miserable life when I live as king of the castle where it is that I live. I'm at the top of the game. And um, so I enjoy that. And it just made me realize that what all of these monitoring people were doing, they were in your life to try and help you remember that you don't deserve any of this and you're unworthy. That's literally what every single person that I've ever met has tried to place upon me as a belief. You don't deserve any of what you've got and you're unworthy. And it's just like, no, 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 no. Self-love is important. So the real issue is, is like, I love myself and you're dealing with people that don't know how to love themselves and because they hate themselves, they believe you should hate yourself as well. But then what it comes back to is when you speak to these individuals, they slip up again and again and again and again and again. And what do you hear? A jealous inner child, and why is the inner child carrying out? Because they won't tend to their own needs. Jealous people won't tend to their own needs. Jealous people won't set their own goals. Jealous people won't strive for something. Jealous people, their only job is to find others to tear down because they won't focus on their own business, they won't self reflect. I couldn't believe what I saw with the deceptiveness of the last one that I cut off. But each one of them, like, you know, I'll give one a few months ago, another person I had to cut off. Where I live, I decided to put a bit of a project together, you know, just because, well, why not? Life's boring. And as I'm putting it together, this individual out of the blue decided to come into my life. And I'm like, why are you here? And what I couldn't believe is they wanted to come into my life and take control of what was going on inside of my life. And I was like, hang on, so you've come into my life to be controlling. Um, so they're cut off and I'll never speak to them again. But this is that same thing that keeps happening again and again and again, is people coming into your life to try and control what's going on inside of your life. And you will get to the point where it's like, most all humans are useless. This is where you're gonna understand who, out of that pack of uselessness, has what you would call the relevant qualification of life itself? To stand as a person to hold the space for you. See, if I'm holding the space for someone, I'm not there to intervene, I'm just giving them a place of support so they can learn to stand on their own two feet. I haven't had that same privilege, unfortunately. Um, I've had to fight for everything, everything, in all ways and always. And it is what it is because, you know, it's made me become what I am quite early on. But it would have been nice to have had a backing. I just don't have that backing. I've never really had that backing because I've just had, you know, everyone's caught up in their own business. I get that. But it's beyond being caught up in your own business. It's the jealousy. It's the selfishness of it. So when you recognize that, like, you never actually had any family, and you never actually had any real friends, and all you really had was just acquaintances that needed a sense of control to try and like use you as a stepping stone to walk on, you know? or a donkey to ride, whatever you want to call it. 
Once you go, right, I'm going to cut all these individuals off, you'll recognize that there's a collar around your neck, a spiritual collar. Break the collar in Jesus Christ's name, get rid of it. Break the collar in Jesus Christ's name and get rid of it. Break the collar in Jesus Christ's name and get rid of it. And in regards to all the cords of attachment, get Archangel Michael's sword like this right now, cut all cords of attachment to that collar, get rid of it, dissolve and disintegrate all the satanic entities that are attached to those cords of attachments in that collar, in Jesus Christ's blood and name, cast them out, in Jesus Christ's blood and name. And every single time you come across someone that's like, oh, I want to come into your life and mentor, you know, no, you know, I ask for a mentor. No. Stop looking for someone to look up to. There's no one to look up to. It is just a clown filled, it is a circus filled with clowns. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll realize that you've been in a pretty ordinary situation all along. What I want you to have a think about is this. How would your life look like if you spent a year free of people trying to pull a lead on you? We're not here to be handled. This is about freedom. These people are indoctrinated by the slavery of society. Keep getting rid of them. Fuck all. Fuck all. Fuck all. Get rid of the collar. Get rid of the collar. You are not to be handled. Ever. You know? Stand tall. Stand in righteousness. Valor. Will. You know? Submit to God Almighty. God wants lions. How are you going to become the almighty lion of your life if you don't submit to God who is going to make you out? How's it going to happen? What, you're going to do it? How? How are you going to make yourself a lion without God? How are you going to do that? I haven't met one yet. All I've met is useless control freaks. And do you want to know about these useless control freaks? Do you want to know what I think scares them the most of all? Look, because there's no condemnation in Christ. See, I don't have self-condemnation. That's not an issue. But, um... I think they must hate the fact that they've wasted so much time walking down the path that they've walked and they're in a state of denial and they know that once they recognise that what they're doing is not quite as correct as they think it should be, oof, they hate to fall as far as they're going to have to fall in order to be able to make the readjustment. See, there is a planetary correction going on. If you want to think about like what is the tribulation, what is the rapture, I think it's got a bit to do with the planetary correction, the correction that someone has to fall to be able to get back to square one. It's like snakes and ladders. There is a snake that everyone's going to have to fall down to get back to the level where they're at and stop faking where they think they are. I kind of think that's the tribulation's purpose. Anyway, and then, once they get back to where they're at, their grassroots, they can then start to think about, right, yeah, so what needs to be pruned off, and how can I start growing in a proper manner with a gardener? Who is the gardener? God. Monitoring spirits, monitoring people. You don't need someone putting themselves into your life thinking that they're your coach. You don't need that shit. But these are the ones that you've got to be careful of. Think about it. Anyone that you communicate with, is there someone in my life that believes that it's their purpose or their right? It just makes me laugh. You know, of all things. There is a number plate in front of me now that has the exact nickname and year of birth of my ex-wife. You want to talk about a monitoring spirit? You don't think that's a sign just there? Um, to absolute the degree, even with the last name and everything, that, that 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 is just there. If I was to live in Australia, what is in front of me? That would be their um, number plate. Anyway, so in regards to even her. And that situation, like the brain-dead deceptiveness of the UK when I lived there and why you know, God has pulled his hand off that country now and it's it's about to fall into a reprobate line completely. May God have mercy on the souls that are of God in that country. Um, but whoever's not, how you, you know, like, how are you supposed to feel sorry for people that are just willfully prideful? narcissistically, you know, willfully prideful. How can you feel sorry for them when they fall over and they cry? How you meant to feel? It's just like, get up. Get up. Get up. You know? They wouldn't know what hardship is. 
that's the tribulation. The tribulation is going to teach the hardship that needs to be taught to pull the heads in on those who need to have their heads pulled. Anyway, monitoring people are the people that you may have asked because you were looking for someone to look up to or the people that have imposed themselves to come along and go on radio, how can I coach you? You don't need a coach. Not unless that person pisses excellence in the field that you are trying to aspire to become your own you know, authority in. You know, we talk like brothers in arms, we talk like captain to my captain. There should be a common respect between individuals, but the problem that you've got in this society is it's just so hierarchically built where it's like, well, someone has to be at the top of the ladder. What ladder? You know, king shit on Turd Island. There is one king. Jesus Christ. Anyway. Again and again, you don't need anyone imposing themselves as a personal coach in your life. You don't need anyone telling you what to do. You don't need anyone saying, oh, you need to do this. You don't need anyone trying to minimalize your ways and, of being and doing. You just don't need anyone that is in your life that, who is, not, that is not decent is not supportive, is not contributive. Yeah. Life's hard enough as it is without having to suffer a saboteur. That's the long and short. Um, where until I come across someone that isn't, yeah, it's just Jesus, me and the pets and the Holy Spirit. God, that's it. And the angels. Jesus loves you. Have a good day. Bye for now.